All right. So in this video, we're going to take a look at my favorite distortion plugins in 2021 and why I like to use them. In my preferred style of techno specifically, which is hypnotic warehouse, underground techno, whatever you want to call it, distortion is one of the most important effects and I treat it almost like an instrument itself. Saturation and distortion can really bring up a completely different character in your sounds and every plugin I'm going to show you today has its own set of strengths, its own particular color and its own way of adding and distributing harmonics. I'm going to use these plugins on my drum bus as a whole rather than single sounds as this is the way I work most of the time anyway. I create a drum groove, make sure it slaps on its own already and then try different distortion and saturation options. As usual, timestamps are below the video if you want to skip directly to your favorite plugin. And please make sure to listen through decent speakers or headphones as the differences in low end are really important to hear. Let's get on. So I prepared this drum groove right here. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like real quick. So this is the clean groove and we are gonna start with the Devil Lock Deluxe from Sound Toys. This is what it looks like. Devil Lock is an absolute beast. And because it is a beast, I have this utility right next to it because we uh, absolutely have to adjust the volume along the way. And I have an EQ right next to this, but we will come to this in a little bit. The mix is at 100% right now. And I'm gonna start on the left side with the crush, which is just a compressor. But it sounds brutal already. Let's dial it back to about four, and then add some distortion. I'm gonna level match by hand here. Obviously, that's way too much. I usually have it between 3 and 4 on both these styles, Crush and Crunch. You can also listen to the slow algorithm, just a different kind of attack. And then we have this darkness feature here. So, if we're not happy with the way our high end sounds, we can adjust the low pass filter. Quite a massive difference already. I also have this uh, EQ here just to take out a little bit of the mids and the super super low end. And voila, cleaned up already. Let's listen to before and after again. So that's Devil Lock, nice one. Next up, we have a plugin called McAtee. And McAtee is from a developer called Air Windows. And this developer doesn't really provide GUIs for his plugins. So we are left with these two sliders over here, the in trim, input trim, and the out pad. I'm gonna leave the out pad at one, which is the default value. So the McAtee emulates a certain mixer, which is called the Mackie 1604, I believe. I'm gonna put it on the screen right here. And what producers did with this is they took the gear and they smashed it into the preamps. And this is what it sounds like. By the way, every time you see a value moving without me using my cursor, this is because I mapped them to my controller here.
So as with many things, less is more. This is the McAtee. Sounds really good, I think. Next up, we're going to take a look at the Vertigo Sound VSM4. There's also a VSM3 version on plug the lines, but Vertigo now has opted to develop their plugins in-house. And this is their latest addition to their plugins. They also make a, an excellent compressor and an excellent EQ. So the sound quality on this is uh, pretty amazing. I'm going to show you first how it sounds like with a relatively moderate input. So I'm going to adjust the output to minus six and raise the input to plus six because this thing really depends on your input level. We have this transformer section here, where we can drive it a little bit. Of course, we have to turn it on. The real star of the show in this section is this low button right here. It just lifts you low without making it too muddy. Then we have tryouts and pantouts. And you have all these options here where you can use them. <clears throat> you can also choose to change the mode and use an input filter. So everything below this threshold will not be affected. In most cases, I use the triode saturation section on the low mids and the pentode section on the full track. But I tend to use the pentodes in mid side mode. That's another thing you can do with this plugin. You can use mono, left, right, or sides. Let's kick in the triodes first. Then I'm going to engage the pentode and we're going to choose S for side here. Now listen what it does when I put up the drive. Instant 3D effect. Very cool. Let's do a little gain matching. Let's turn on and off without. And with. We can also choose to just listen to the sides or just to the mids. And you can run this thing in oversampling up to 16 times. Shape controls adjust a low pass filter so you have more control over your highs. Next up, we're looking at a new plugin, which is a little bit of a wild card because it can do so much. It's not just distortion or saturation, it can do a whole lot of things. Essentially, what it does is it affects the signal on the positive and the negative level, and you can apply different kinds of algorithms of saturation and distortion, wave shaping noise, sample rate reduction, uh, all kinds of stuff to it. And we're gonna start by applying some soft wave shaping just to the positive side. And then to the negative side. Really neat layout because you can see what you're doing in real time on this big display in the middle. You also have a dry wet slider, which every plugin should have, in my opinion. You can also assign macros to whatever you want just by taking this little dot here and pulling it over to control, letting it drop, and then you can adjust the amount. It should be affected. But let's listen to a few of the wave shapes. positive side.
if you're into character and wild sound design, this should be something worth a look. They also have this section in the middle, which is modulation. So you have an LFO, an envelope follower, and to the left and to the right, we have two more effects. For example, this comb filter. And a regular filter, which can split the signal in stereo. So yeah, this thing is something to really sink a lot of time into, and I'm pretty sure there are tutorials online already for this, if you're into sound mangling. Now we're going to have a look at a plugin that is a bit of a, I would call it an odd one out, because it's not really a dedicated distortion plugin, but a bit crusher. So if you're going for that resampled MPC SP1200 sound, this can add some very nice character to your drums. But that's not all of it, because there is a built-in distortion over here in the preamp section, and it sounds really good. So let's start listening to the drums in context. I'm just gonna reduce the sample right over here. They also have this jitter function, which fluctuates a little bit around the point you're entering. And we can adjust the resolution to, let's say, 12-bit. And if you're not too keen on that high frequency that's being introduced by adjusting the resampler frequency, you can use the integrated filter to get rid of this. So now I'm gonna adjust the preamp and trying to level match at the same time. And as with all the plugins we are discussing right here, I'm going into the extremes just so you can hear what the plugin is capable of. And you're hearing already this thing can get nasty. Maybe not the go-to option for distortion, but I figured worth mentioning because the combination of different features in here is really neat. Moving on to the last for today's plugins, I'm gonna make a part two of this because I didn't nearly cover all distortion and saturation plugins I have here. So there will be a part two of this at some point in the near future. Decapitator, this one's already a classic and for a good reason. It's a highly sought after sound and it's being used on countless records. So this thing is pretty straightforward. We have a drive section right here. We have an output with an auto gain, which I almost never use. Let's disengage that. Thump is just in Q at the cutoff point for this low cut filter. Steep changes the high pass filter, I think from a two pole to a four pole filter. And then we have this tone section dark and bright, which does what it says on the tin. And down here we have the most interesting part, which are the algorithms. I tend to use A, T and P the most. A stands for Ampex, which emulates a tape recorder. 
And T and P stand for triode and pentode, and they emulate the circuit of the Phoenix thermionic culture vulture. Let's have a listen. As you can hear, the tone is just a tilt EQ, which is nice to have. I'm usually using other plugins when I need a tilt EQ, but having something like this built in is very convenient. And then we have this punish button over here. which, as you can hear, introduces a ridiculous amount of input gain. Decapitator, one of my favorites. So this would be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, make sure to leave a comment down below with any questions you might have. I'd appreciate, if you liked this video, for you to push the like button and subscribe to my channel, as this really helps the YouTube algorithm. As I said earlier, I will make a part two of this at some point in the future. But also you can expect some techno workflow videos, which is just me showing you how I use different plugins. That said, thanks for watching and see you soon.